Kia ora, I'm Sheree Kinnear and these are the latest New Zealand Herald headlines. Fully vaccinated tourists will be allowed into the country sooner than expected, with Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern saying a final reopening date will be announced tomorrow. Originally, such travellers from Australia and visa waiver countries could arrive MIQ free no later than July and visitors from anywhere in the world from October. But as the peak of Omicron nears and the risk profile of new arrivals changing, the government was looking to bring forward those dates. Short-term relief at the petrol pump is here after fuel excise duties and road user charges have both been cut by 25 cents a litre for three months. The fuel excise contributes to the Land Transport Fund, which pays for transport infrastructure. The government will top up the $350 million of expected revenue loss by diverting no longer required money from the COVID relief fund. But Chief Economist for Business Think Tank New Zealand Initiative, Eric Crampton, says the whole thing is more of a tax shift than a tax reduction. Shifting part of the cost of dealing with the roads and maintaining them and building them from user charges, which is what petrol excise and road user charges typically are, over onto the general tax base. There's no real good economic case for doing that. Public transport fares will also be halved for three months from April 1st. A guilty verdict over the murder of Martin Berry has sparked no emotion from the woman who ended his life. Rena Joyce was found guilty in the High Court in Christchurch last night of murdering her partner. The jury delivered their verdict around 8pm, having deliberated for just under five hours. The 56-year-old had claimed it was accidental manslaughter when she stabbed Berry at their home in December 2020. In a statement, Berry's family says they're pleased that his voice has been heard and that the right conclusion to this sad occasion is over. New Zealand's health system is now facing some of what other countries suffered at the start of the pandemic. That's from a health infrastructure expert as COVID cases are falling but hospitalisation rates are rising. 952 patients are in hospitals across the country, including 19 in intensive care. Otago University's Robin Gould says this time two years ago, Italy saw thousands of deaths. We're not anything like that, but nonetheless, you know, we're going into a pretty stretched set of circumstances. And in those countries also, I don't think people would have been staying home if they were COVID positive. They still would have been out there at the front line providing care. Today marks three years since the devastating March 15 terror attacks in Christchurch. On that day in 2019, a gunman murdered 51 people in two mosques. Parliament will mark the anniversary with a special motion in the House later today. And in world news, Russia is continuing its bombardment on cities across Ukraine. Airstrikes have struck a large military base near the western city of Lviv, killing 35 people and leaving more than 130 in hospital. Strikes have also hit several locations in the capital, Kiev. An evacuation convoy of about 160 vehicles has managed to leave the city of Mariupol, where escapees say residents have run out of clean water and food. Meanwhile, a fourth round of talks between Ukraine and Russia have ended without breakthrough. And those are the latest New Zealand Herald headlines. For more and to stay up to date, head to nzherald.co.nz. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. To stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald, click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here. And head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.